It's, it's the, the Jay Tay Show. show. It's, it's the, the Jay Tay Show. It's the Jay Tay Show. It's the Jay Tay Show. Seasons greetings. Welcome to the J. Tay Show. Welcome to the J. Tay Show. All right. We are back with chapter eight of Crushing. Thank God for this book and the impact it is having on our lives. I'm not sure how many of you are taking the journey with us. Uh, as some people have caught up with us and passed us, but we are still on the journey. Mm -hmm. And we are starting today with chapter eight, Power in the Blood. It's quite, a, quite an interesting story of uh, Zipporah and Moses. And uh, when God unctions him, and this is after the uh, burning bush experience that Moses encounters with God and something changes in him. And as they are returning to Egypt, <clears throat> really against Zipporah's wishes, against what she has uh in mind for their family. This is, you know, it made me think about the uprooting uh, when you do have a family. Uh, as single people, we're, we're able to get up and move and go and do as we please. But when you have a family, you have to consider everyone that is in your family. And so even if you come saying that uh, I'm moving because of a God thing, because I've had an encounter with God, uh, that doesn't mean everybody in the house has had that same encounter, nor would they understand uh, what you're dealing with. But to see that and read that uh, Moses fell into such a deep sleep that Sapporo realized that he was fighting for his life. Mm -hmm. And to uh, get in order with God's covenant which that he made with Abram that each child would be circumcised. Every male child in the family would be circumcised. Uh, Zipporah knew that this needed to happen, even though she was against it. Uh, when she realized what was happening to Abraham, I mean, to Moses, she chose to go ahead and circumcise her son herself, uh, who was also in the deep sleep. Uh, so I, I just thought that was amazing. Um, uh, but it, you know, even as good as their relationship was, and it was even saying how organic they their relationship was, that all was well until Moses encountered the Most High. I thought that was just the most powerful statement. The, you know, Bishop tells a lot uh, about the story, and I tried to just kind of condense it, <clears throat> kind of bring some uh, life to the story, but when I when you read that, it made me think, uh, or when I read that, it made me think about shattered, the cost of a yes, uh, by Moses Moses saying yes to God at that burning bush, uh, that that was well in his life now gets shook up, and now he finds himself on the move and and with disgruntled family, uh, as as a direct result of God shaking things up. And so I thought that was that was interesting to say all was well until Moses encountered the Most High. And just, you know, I, I wonder how often that is for many of us as believers. Uh, I've really been on this power of story and the thought of the stories that we tell ourselves that is that is really becoming a big, a big part of my my experience in this season and to be with others who say that they've had a God encounter, you know, what, what do you have to tell yourself in order to move forward with such a statement, especially when, when uh, you ask God, who is he? And he says, I am that I am that that's his response. He is. And, and then you begin to see along the journey that he is a provider. He is protection. He is direction. Uh, that he will direct you. And so, um, <clears throat> did you have anything on page 130? I do not. I uh, thought it was a pretty interesting story, too. I mean, how Bishop really wanted to detail um, about Moses and um, everything that he went through. And it was one thing I just saw I was going to point out, but I lost it, so go ahead. 
It says this new God Moses spoke of did a number on him. Has God really done a number on us? Mm -hmm. And it says Zipporah was forced to acquiesce to a deity she had never worshipped. I just thought that was interesting because even though she had not uh, formally received the introduction of God, she was about to get ready to see his hand at work in their lives and see what it was that God had chosen her husband for. But it's just something about that place of transition where there is the place of, I'm not certain. I don't know what's going on here. I know I could tell that something has happened with him. I know something is different, but I'm unaware. And to be for, you know, the thought of somebody forcing, when I see that just kind of caught my attention, she's now forced to ask we yes. a lot of times we we see the story but we fail to consider everyone who is involved in the story and how it how it affects their lives as well we see the good that god does in the situation we see that it's a promise fulfilled but what about those who uh were in the moment and did not understand where we're going what was going on? Mm -hmm. wow okay Everything in her was shaken to the core. What do you do when everything in you is shaken to the core? Oh God, what, what, when your life just, I mean, it's basically just turned upside down and you don't know which way to go. Uh, I was just recently thinking of, it's one thing to try and start telling yourself a different story and convince yourself that you're making the right moves and that, that, that God is for you in this, these things, but then you see other things on the outside of you that paint a different picture. And it's kind of like you're in these competing stories against one another, what I see versus what I feel, what I know versus what I'm seeing. I think that's when your faith has to really kick in like no, like no other. Mm -hmm. And I'll wait mm -hmm. what you see and what you feel and just go with, with what, you know. what you know that God can and will do. And that's that is truly the truth. It's it's truly the truth. You know, I'm thinking about just this week of spring break, and not one thing did I get done around the house that I can say, you know, was on my list of things to do. And it's just, you know, those it's the conflicting stories. It really boils down to the conflicting stories. And uh one of the things that I see here, move, trying to move on back onto the story because I get off. Uh, there was no time for prayer, only action. And to which being would she pray? Uh, she wasn't used to praying to God. So who would she pray? Who would she pray to in this, this situation where Moses uh, seems to be dying and is in a fight for his life in his sleep? Uh, who, who would she talk to? And so she knew that uh, part of what had been requested was for the son to be uh, circumcised. And so she she went with that to see if that was it. So, you know, I just wonder what kind of effect did that have on her when she realized that that action of obedience in that moment did save Moses' life. And then, you know, the, the following moments that came after that to see how God used him to go in to Egypt and witness those plagues and then see uh, the Red Sea experience and all of okay. this. What what did that do for her faith? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I just keep, you know, this, this, this has highlighted Zipporah's life to me in a way that probably I would never have seen her or even uh, been concerned about the effect of all of this on her. And a lot of times, you know, we're called, we're chosen, but we don't realize the effect that just our being here and having a calling or being chosen, the effect that has on those around us. Goes right back to the cost of the yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ordeal ended after Zipporah applied the circumcision blood. I thought that was very interesting. All that Moses was going through, uh, it ended when she when she acted in obedience. 
it said, uh, it goes on to say that Abraham performed his own circumcision at 99. Lord, sweet Jesus. <clears throat> oh, God. And God said to him, it would be a sign of the covenant between me and you. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And I just thought that was interesting because if if the child is to be circumcised at eight days old, then you would think it would be the parents who would be cut off or, or punished. But that child, and you're just thinking how many children are literally suffering because of their parents' mistakes or their parents' choices. You know what I'm saying? What 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 does that speak? You know, uh, and because it says yeah, he has broken my covenant. So I just, you know, I think that is that is very, very interesting and something to look deeper into because uh, an eight-year-old child is not responsible for circumcising right. himself, right. you know? So God calls us what we will be while we're wrestling with what we were and what we did. Mm -hmm. Oh, we. That goes back to the story that we tell ourselves. Because we are truly, it's a daily wrestling. It is a daily wrestling. And, you know, I, I think to myself, if anybody knows about that daily wrestling, it's me. And, you know, the thought of picking up your cross on a daily basis, because uh, even if you say, I'm moving on, I'm going further, I'm going to move and, and not let my past hold me down, there are things that come up over and over that will remind you of what you've been through and and what what some still is residue in your life and so uh, it's just kind of that's another conundrum because you, we're told that we need to move on and leave the past behind but it's like every day something's happening to remind you of what you've been through and so finding balance being able to discipline yourself to change your thoughts uh, being able to have such con a mind control to be able to go in and think a different thought when those thoughts arise. I think that is something to uh, really, really be celebrated because a lot of times we have soaked in our problem and we've soaked in the past experiences and uh, the thought of trying to get free of that thought in that time wasn't even a thought. But now we have these prompts and guardrails that have been put in place so that it will give us a new thought, a new a new perspective, a new way to look at it. Uh, even if it's just simply saying to ourselves that this too shall pass. You know, I heard a podcast today um, and the lady was talking about scars, that she has a lot of um, outer scars on her from being in a domestic violence relationship. Mm -hmm. She said, but the scars on the outside have healed, mm -hmm. you know, and new scars have come up from something else. Mm -hmm. But the old scars are internally mm -hmm. worse than what they were on the outside. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like she kept, she just keep, she kept trying to get that point across that on the outside, you know what I'm saying? Like it's healed. It's it's moved on, you know, something else has happened and I'm putting a band out on that now, but on the inside, that scar is still bleeding. It's not even beginning to heal. And the lady, you know, told her she, I don't, I can't remember how she put it, but she was basically telling her just to let it go. She's like, just let it go. And she was like, how? That's the how question. do you, yeah. she's like, you know, I'm I'm listening to you. She says, it's not that I want to hold on, but yeah. how do I do it? That's right. She said, because I'm literally bleeding internally. How do I, the outside is healed. Mm. What do I do? Mm. What a question. And that is truly the question. You know, it's a lot of things that we have, these questions, these serious, serious, these are serious questions because yeah. There's there's the internal work that has to be done. And then, you know, I, that's kind of one of the things I find disgusting about humanity is that uh, we look down on others and think mm -hmm. that they should have this and that together. But you don't know the experience of the next person, what they've survived, 
to even make it to your presence. Yeah. And the stories that they've been told that are competing with what they're trying to do now, that it's, it's hard for them. And, and a lot of times we don't have empathy and sympathy knowing that we need that same grace as well. Because this stuff is from childhood. And it starts in childhood. It, it literally does. We just watched on 911. Althea was scared to go on the boat from something she saw as a kid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it's Athena. Athena. <laughs> anyway, Abraham bore the physical proof, uh, and his even those even the men and his indentured servants that they were not like the men of the surrounding countries and societies. I highlighted that and just thought about what is the proof that we're different. What is what is the proof that we're different? The master wants the totality of who and what you are because you will receive nothing less from him you know i you know the the song when you look down in my hands they look new mm -hmm. but do your hands really look new when you when you come into christ mm -hmm. do your feet look new do they i know that's the song that we sing but because mm -hmm. it only take a little slip up for it to uh oh oh for your hands to go back to doing what they were doing and your feet taking you where they were taking you oh Okay, well, <laughs> the reconnection of his entire house back to God via the circumcision of his son became intensely necessary. Just the thought, just the thought of that, that because of one uncircumcised child, it caused disarray in the whole house. Wow. I thought that was interesting. What page are you on right now? 140. Okay, I'm going to go back. Okay. I'm going to go back to it. It says, um, how often make the mistake of labeling, labeling people based on what they've done. However, in labeling someone by what they've done, We've always forced to call somebody by what they did last. God mm -hmm. does not do the same thing with so, us. Yeah, he doesn't do that. And I highlighted that because I, <laughs> I always think about the homeless people. <laughs> like people always say they choose, you know what I'm saying, to be out there. And we don't know that. We, we don't know that they choose to. And there's a guy on Facebook, and I'm going to send him to you. He's going around interviewing homeless people. How are you out here? Why are you out here? And some of their stories, mm -hmm. it's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, it, we know we have no clue how people get to the state that they're in. Yeah. There, but there is there is a list of things that happen. It doesn't necessarily happen overnight, but there's a list of things that are that contribute to the state that we find ourselves in. And a lot of times, it's you know, one of my biggest things has been when you are reaching out for help, when you are saying, I know I need help. And it seems as if there's no rescuing, there is no help in sight. And, you know, you call on God, you continue to pray and just believe that some way, somehow that help is going to come. God's blessings become reality in our lives when we re when we rejoin the master's plan by lining up with his faith. That stood out to me too. Mm -hmm. okay. If God kept his word to Abraham, Moses, and the entire nation of the Israel <clears throat> because of their remaining in the covenant and the connection with him, why in the world would he why in the world do you think he wouldn't keep his word with you? Mm. <laughs> okay you know I, when you say that that just makes me think sometimes we can feel so insignificant in such a huge vast and moving world and God doesn't see us that way and yeah that, that we we do have some significance there is a reason and you know even though sometimes we don't understand it but there's a reason why we're here there's a reason why we're still alive especially after all that we've been through and so just, you know, what what stands out to me in this next thing is be just as desperate 
for reconnection back mm -hmm. to him as he is. And it's it's be that being desperate. Yeah. Are we really desperate? Abraham became the friend of God simply by believing him. I thought that was truly powerful. It's it all it's it all goes back to what we believe. The stories that we choose to believe. Uh, and in this life, the thing is, there are so many conflicting stories. There's so many different things that we can believe. Uh, if we choose to, we have a choice on what we will believe. And, you know, for me, some of the hardest things about being a believer in Christ is uh, when you when you are praying and you're doing things and you're you're uh, believing God for for change and this and you don't see it happening. And then you think, you know, there are, script, there are scriptures that tell us to wait. And, but there, is, there are also scriptures that tell us that uh, hope deferred, make it the heart sick. And so, you know, that sometimes while you're still hoping, it can, it can just, it, you can start feeling hopeless. And it's, it's truly uh, what the final thing that I have highlighted is via circumcision uh, that is spiritual and of the heart, truly asking God to circumcise our heart, yeah. circumcise yeah. us spiritually to really have the heart of God to, to be his friend, to walk in his statutes and, and to want his will for our lives and mm -hmm. to understand what that looks like. Because as we read some of these stories and the things that these uh, different servants have gone through as a result of their yes, we're, we're really being challenged to, as the word says, uh, to count up the cost. Is, is it worth the cost of the yes? And that's a, that is a personal question that each one of us has to deal with. And the thing is, we know what we believe the outcome to be is worth it. But then when you're going through it, is it worth it to believe that this crushing, that that the the, the shattering, mm -hmm. that there will be wine, that yeah. there, there will be a good result as a result of us going through this? You have to believe that to be able to hold on. We have to, we literally have to trust that the same God who spoke to Bishop and put these words in this book for us. Mm -hmm. Uh, the same God who put the words in the Bible for us, uh, mm -hmm. that they are words of life and truth that will bring us to that expected end, that he will, he will get us there. And that's, that's what we have to trust. And I mean, it, and the thing is, since we have choices, it's either we're going to trust or we're not. You said something a few minutes ago, and I was trying to hold on to it, um, about, something do you remember what you said about the mind about a thought that we have in our mind no gosh i should have I, and i got a notepad right here i should have wrote it down but i think it was kind of on the fact of it made me i don't want to mess it up but i'm thinking what you were saying and what i my thought was if this is right I lost it. I'm staying. I lost it. And I, gosh, I'm going to go back when I watch it. I'm going to comment in the comments because it was something about you said about the mind and about what we think. And I was thinking, I don't know. I don't know. I lost it. I'm going to have to go back and listen now. Okay. Well, you know, I understand. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. Do we have any announcements? It's the JT Show. I am doing the 50-50, y'all. 50-50. 50-50 is back. I've only had one person to give so far, but we know how that has happened in times past. Uh, or the the very first time we did it, we made brought in uh, $1,100. So we know that it is possible to do uh, great on this 
uh, no matter how, how slow it starts out. And so you have to April 13th. Okay, this is nationwide. This is worldwide. As long as you have Zilla Cash App, you can be a part of the 50-50. It could be you. Yeah, the last one, the last winner won over $500. $550 okay. to be exact. That's a lot of money to walk away with from sewing in to a $2, $5, $20. So it is worth the investment, y'all. It is so worth it. Yep, this person sold $20 and got $530 in, 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 it, in return. Wow. That's minus the $20 that she gave initially. You can't beat that. You can't. Yeah. That's literally a, a great gamble. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward to returning to the studio next week. Hey. And so... Uh, Thank God that I don't know what's happened, but this month has truly been a blessing. And so uh, no one has given anything extra. I've just been doing a few little extra things and have and should have enough by next week to be able to put toward the studio. Right. So I'm excited. And I will also be going into the studio soon to uh, do my drum tracks, which means that the single will be out uh, hopefully and preferably before school is out. Eat. A single from volume seven, okay, which will prepare the way for the rest of volume seven. And so I'm definitely looking forward to hearing back from uh, my co-producer who is at the studio now, listening to the live files from volume seven to see what can be salvaged, what we need to do. And uh, that will kind of tell us where we are. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that report. So Keep us in prayer. Uh, truly seeing dreams and goals being accomplished is an answer prayer. Yeah. And I thank and praise God. I, somebody must have commented on the volume seven uh, live recording because it popped up on my timeline mm -hmm. and I listened to it. I was like, it just, it, for one, it don't seem like it was that long ago. Mm -hmm. But to think that we was in the middle of a pandemic and we went in there, nobody got sick. Mm -hmm. We was not scared. We went in there and did what we were supposed to do. Have rehearsals and everything. That's wow. we, to me, those are just the signs that God is with you. Yeah. And, you, need, you know, right? even us being, I forgot we had on the robes and everything, but just mm -hmm. to see that really blessed me to know that it's possible. Yeah. It, if, it, if God could use us to do that then, what is it that he can use mm -hmm. us to do now and moving forward? Yeah. So definitely looking forward to that. Uh, God bless you all. Shante, do you have anything else? I do not. Thank you all so much for tuning into the JK Show. God bless you all. It's the JK Show. It's the JK Show. It's the JK Show. It's the JK Show. It's the JK Show.